Hey guys, so today you are going to be educated about a really cool mathematician named Paul Erdos. He was born on March 26, 1913 in Budapest, Austria, Hungary. He was born into a family with two parents, Anna and Lajos Erdos, who were both Jewish math teachers. But he also would have had two sisters, but when they were three and five years old, they died um, from scarlet fever, and they actually both died just days before Erdos was born, so pretty crazy stuff. But both his parents were math teachers, so he was always kind of had math in his life. When he was 16 years old, his dad introduced him to the infinite series and the set theory, which are um, two things that he spent a lot of his life studying. And then at the age of 21 in 1934, he graduated from the University of Budapest with a doctorate in mathematics. And from there, he went to be a guest lecturer in Manchester, England. And um, in 1938, he moved to the U.S. to teach at Princeton University and then went on to teach around the U.S. But it was very important that he got into the U.S. at that time because... Um, that was around the time that the Holocaust started. So since he was in the U.S., he was able to survive, but some of his family did not. Because, since they were all Jewish, he had two aunts, two uncles who died, as well as his father died in Budapest. And um, his mom only survived because she was able to um, survive in hiding. So that was something interesting about him. But luckily for him, he, was, he did not get killed in the Holocaust. So he spent his life traveling around the world, going and lecturing at all sorts of universities, going to national conference, science conferences all over the world. And he'd oftentimes just go to colleagues' homes and um, be like, hey, um, let me stay here for a bit and we can collaborate on some stuff. And so he'd often just show up at someone's house and say, um, my mind is open. And that was kind of his opening line. And it was pretty cool, but the only reason he was able to do any of this was because he was never married and he had no kids, so he had no ties anywhere, so he was able to just go wherever he wanted. But since he um, traveled around the world and went to all these places, he had a lot of time to do math, and he ended up um, writing or co-authoring 1,525 math articles, and he collaborated with 511 different mathematicians from around the world so that's pretty cool and his most frequent collaborators were Andras Tsiolkovsky and they um, wrote 62 papers together and then Andras Hanjal uh, and him wrote 56 papers and Ralph Fadri who is an American um, wrote 50 papers together with Erdos so he definitely had a lot to say about math uh, but some of his most fam famous work that he did was on the Ramsey theory, on the probabilistic method, and finding the proof for Burton's pro postulate. And then he also worked on finding the first elementary proof for the prime number theorem along with Selberg, who is one of the people that he collaborated with. with. And... Yeah, so he spent a lot of his time solving already open problems. He didn't really create new problems like some mathematicians did, but he um, spent his time solving all the already open problems. He won the Wolf Prize, which is a prize from Israel, um, for his work on the number theory, on combinatorics, uh, probability, set theory, and on his work with mathematic analysis. And then he also received, in the last 20 years of his life, 15 honorary doctorates from colleges around the world just for all the work that he had done and all the places that he had been. And something really interesting is that he was a member of scientific academies for eight different countries, which is crazy that he was so influential in so many different places. And some of these places included in um, the U.S., in the U.K., as well as in um, back in Austria-Hungary. So pretty cool stuff.
but he made all his money by doing lectures and from winning awards, but he actually donated most of his earnings. He just, he saved what he needed to travel and go places he needed to go, and the rest of it he gave to people, and some of this money went to things that were called Erdos problems, which is where he had these problems that he couldn't solve or that he just needed help answering, and he offered people money for these unsolved problems, and you could get anywhere from 25 to thousands of dollars, and some of these problems are still um, out there today being asked, and you can still get money by answering these questions, so... I have one of these up on the screen right now, but I mean, I would read it, but like it went way over my head, so yeah. But if you were able to prove that, you would get, you could earn $5,000, so yeah. But Erdos was also some interesting little facts about him. He was an agnostic atheist, but he had this belief in something he called the book, which was something he believed to be that there was a book that the God was hiding all of the best math equations in that book. So whenever he'd come across like a great equation or something that he found very intriguing, he'd say, that one's from the book. That So that was... He had a lot of little quirks like that. Another interesting thing that he did was he was a heavy user of amphetamines. He um, ha used amphetamines to help him with his math. He actually had a bet with one of his colleagues that if he quit for one month, he would get $500 because everyone was telling him, you, would, you won't be able to quit. So he quit for a month, got the money, and then he started his... Uh, started his drugs back up because he said that when he looked at a piece of paper without the drugs all he saw was a blank sheet of paper but when he was taking his amphetamines he saw all these equations going on he was just much more progressive he said it, it set him back a month when he wasn't able to use his amphetamines so Paul Erdos ha also had a very different vocabulary from most people he um, would call children epsilons because in calculus that's the name for a small quantity of something and then he called women bosses he'd call the men slaves he would um, refer to alcohol as poison and any music other than classical was just noise um, people who were married were captured people who were divorced were liberated and when he gave a mac math lecture it would be him preaching and then he referred to the u.s as sam land after uncle sam as and then he also called the soviet union jodum because of joseph stalin so yeah pretty pretty neat dude but towards the end of his life um when he'd signed documents and such he started adding things afterwards so when he was 60, he'd sign it Paul Erdos, P-O-G-M, standing for poor old great man. And then at 65, he added an L-D for living dead. At 70, he added an A-D for archaeologic discovery. And then at 75, he added counts dead. So, so yeah, weird dude. But he did eventually die on September 20th, 1996, when he was 83 years old of a heart attack, and actually, he died just hours after he solved a difficult Nettleson geometry problem while at a conference in Warsaw. So, I guess the problem was really exciting, and he solved it, and that was, that was the end. But I guess that's the way to go when you're a mathematician, solve a problem, and die. So, I don't know. Anyway, um, after he died, some of his friends made a tribute to him um, with something called the Erdos number, which um, just shows a person's degree of separation from Erdos based on their collaboration that um, that they had with him because he collaborated with, aided with so many people. So he had the Erdos number of zero because he was himself, but every, anyone who immediately collaborated with him got a one. So those 511 people that he wrote a paper with had a one, and then people who collaborated with those people got a two, and so on. So over 200,000 mathematicians have an assigned Erdos number, 
And 90% of the world's active mathematicians today have an Erdos number smaller than eight. So it just shows how influential all his work does. Like the important people in math um, are very connected to him. So um, also after he died, some people wrote books about him because he's so cool. Um, so Hoffman's wrote a, a biography called The Man Who Loved Only Numbers. And then there was also um, a book titled My Brain is Open after the saying that he'd say whenever he'd show up at someone's house trying to do some math. And then there's also a picture book written by Deborah Hillman called The Boy Who Loved Math. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy learning about Paul Erdos because I thought he was pretty cool. I mean, I wish he was my grandpa because... But, I mean, he never married or had kids, but, like, still, cool old dude, if you ask me. But, yeah, Paul Ardos.